Chris, congratulations. Uh, man of the moment. How long does the moment last, Nick? Well, Can the, you tell me? The moment lasts for three years, according to the contract. Let's, let's which I've, so, shall I've we? got a contract here, yes? Three years. Listen, are you going to be right at the heart? Are you going to be making those exotic, fantastic, polished films and going to, you know, Hong Kong one week and the uh, Arctic Circle the next week? How are you going to find the time? Apparently. Um, no, we'll, we'll, there'll be the time. Just got to organise it, really. Got to organise ourselves. You know, we thought about that. I've thought about that. Um, you know, I sort of started working on the show on Saturday morning, to be honest, uh, thinking about, you know, uh, evolution, not revolution, all those things which we know work from things we've taken over in the past. But no, the films have got to stay there. They're a crucial part of uh, what Top Gear is. And are you going to be in all of them or are you going to have a sort of a team, <laughs> a team of, uh, you know, because you're good with teams. My wife was in one of your teams once. You're, you know, you're good at getting people around you and interacting with people. Are, presu are the team members going to be in those films? Are you going to be in all of them? Well, no, I mean, you know, the, the, the past incumbents weren't in all of them either. That's not how it works. Uh, so I think uh, we've got to, first of all, you know, we get the way I make a TV show, and what's bizarre is that the f I get massive pieces of white paper, A3, A2 pieces of paper, and I spread them all over the floor and I get a Sharpie. And what I do is I um, draw circles. So I draw circles for different segments of the show, and then I, underneath that, I, I time what the duration of the show is. I then, then make a list of things that have to go in the show, and I start filling those circles up and then we're left with some time and that's the time that we have to do other things in so we'll look at what we have to put in uh, what we need to put in and um, and then we'll see what's left and what we might want to put in and um, and that's how I'll do it so so then we'll divvy up where we'll say okay where do we want to go what do we want to do and um, of course there's a Top Gear production team in place at the BBC who've done this so the first thing I'm going to do is sit down with them and tell me what you know you know ask them to tell me what you know I'm going to be talking to other people there's a guy who's worked on Top Gear for 20 years. Can you believe that? Uh, that's so he's worked on all the different incarnations of the programme and I'm going to be bending his ear for the next few days. And, um, you know, I, I want you know, a super lesson in how to make Top Gear and then I'll take what I know from TV production and we'll hopefully sort it all out. What kind of people do you want to have around you on camera? Um, I want to have people who are extremely knowledgeable about cars. That's massively important. I want to have um, people who have great energy. I want to have people who have good timing. Uh, I want to have people who have warmth about them. I want to have people who um, are, you know, keen and eager to do things differently. Women? Uh, but absolutely, but not for the sake of it. No, no, for the sake of it, it's important, isn't it? Will, will one of them or two of them or however many of them be a woman? Can you confirm that? Yes, I, well, I can confirm that, yeah, definitely, 100%. That's good. And what about the evolution of the show? Are you still going to have Star in a reasonably priced car or is that out the window? No, that's that's going to be in there. I mean, it's going to change. You know, I'm going to mm. put bells and whistles on things. You know, we have the Christmas tree, but we're going to put different and more decorations on it. So I'm really excited because they've, they've come up, you know, they've created such a fantastic programme over the years. You know, it's so rock solid. And, you know, it's, ha it's had its ebbs and it's had its flows, but, you know, it's always been brilliant. You know, a, a bad Top Gear, you know, in their eyes, as far as they're concerned, is, is, you know, sort of 10 out of 10 for any other programme. You know, I've never seen a bad Top Gear. They don't exist. Um, so, you know, to, to be given that, you know, to be given this pot of gold and to, to, be, to, to be given the freedom and the executive producership of saying, like, OK, we want you to host it, but we also want you to produce it and you can make all the calls. Um, and that was the deal and that will be the deal and that's what we'll be doing with you it. You won't be able to. Executive producer, presenter, mastermind, planner, genius behind it. Yeah, you're not going to have a time to do 44 weeks on the Radio 2 Breakfast Show, which is good for me. <laughs> it's actually 42 weeks. <laughs> so, so I might You're not going to have time for that. <laughs> I think I will. Well, we'll see about that. Um, global product, fantastic show. That's going to carry on. Evolution and so forth. Um, you're, you're very, very hands-on. Going back to Jeremy, all the same attributes for him. Th did you feel sympathy for him and the situation he got himself into. Yeah, I felt sympathy for the whole situation, for everybody that was involved in it, and the programme and the BBC and the fans of the show. It was just, it was just a very unfortunate um, set of circumstances that, that came together. It was almost the perfect storm of circumstances. Um, and I was sad, you know, I remember, because uh, me and the kids and my wife, we watched Top Gear on a Monday. Um, we save it for, from Sunday. And we watch it on a Monday, and we watch the first half uh, on a 
Monday night, and then we watch the second half on a Tuesday night, and it's the kids' incentive to eat the tea, and then we go and watch the first half and the second half on consecutive nights. And I remember um, watching the last Top Gear and feeling immense sadness. You know, I, I didn't get sad about the end of Friends or the end of Sex and the City. I haven't been sad about a programme ending uh, before in my life. I've been around people who have felt that about other kinds of programmes. Uh, but I, I felt this real loss. I know it sounds silly because it's just a TV show. No, no. No, but, people... Uh, people People know exactly what you mean. I've got one more for you. Got to dash off. I got one more. We've been doing great denials this morning. Michael Hesseltine on Mrs. Thatcher. I conceive of conceive of no circumstances in which I'd stand against <laughs> Mrs. Thatcher. Bill Clinton. I don't want to class you with Bill. Of course, that's perhaps uh, not fair. But I did not have sex with that woman. And also, of course, the Eagles. Uh, hell will freeze over before we reunite. This was yours. Listen to this. This is not true. It's absolute nonsense. So that's never going to happen. Mm. Mm. Comment, please. Okay, no, well, well, I said it. On, I've already said it on my show this morning. But um, what the, what was happening there is that I was the bookie's favourite immediately to take over. Um, my friends were involved in the situation, and by my friends, I mean Jeremy, uh, James, Richard, and Andy Wilman, who I know very well. Um, and I did not want to be a pawn in that game, and I, you know, it really didn't cross my mind that. A, um, there would be a vacancy for anyone because I I truly believe that the show would carry on with obviously not with Jeremy as it turned out, but I honestly thought Richard and uh, James were going to get involved in the program and I thought they were going to carry it forward and I thought they'd invite somebody else on the show and I thought Richard would move into Jeremy's chair, James would literally move one seat down and somebody else or some other people, maybe two people would come on the end or you'd get into a have I got news for you situation where you have different guests hosting or co-hosting every week and that's why I said that because it was, you know I did not want to make a situation for my pals even more complicated and uh, give somebody somewhere some leverage uh, because the fact that I was involved in it. And I genuinely thought that it would never happen. And on um, Thursday, because this only happened on Thursday, uh, I got a text from the head of entertainment at BBC TV um, saying, are you prepared to have a Top Gear conversation? And that was Thursday of last week. That was the first time that any of these kind of conversations began. And I said, well, why? You know, because I can't do that. You know what I've said in the past? And he said, well, yesterday, which was Wednesday, um, Richard and James have officially ruled, them, ruled themselves out of any future with Top Gear. I said, OK, well, that's a different circumstance then. So we had the conversation. Onwards and upwards. Good luck. Fantastic uh, for you. Fantastic for the viewers, I think. I think it's going to be great. Uh, good to talk to you. OK, are you available? Uh, no, never, <laughs> never, never, <laughs> never, never. All right, I'll meet you for a coffee after. See you later. <laughs> 9.51. What do you think? Uh, uh, Jackie in Cambridge, George in Slough. Morning, George. Good morning, Nicky. Uh, Jackie as well. Jackie, you go first. What do you reckon? Hi. I, uh, you can just hear the enthusiasm in his voice, can't you? I think it's a really, really good appointment. I can't think of anyone else who could do it, and I'm really pleased. Yeah, George? Yeah, I'm really pleased. He loved, we all know he loves cars. He's a terrible show-off. He's going to be great. Um, it'll, be, it'll be really good fun. And also, the, um, the original three, they'll go off and do it on Channel 5 or on Netflix or on um, Sky, and we'll get, we'll get two for the price of one. I'll get to be a caveman twice a week. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here with my cappuccino and my moisturiser. I'm being a, a modern <laughs> metrosexual man, but I can be a caveman now twice a week. This is your, that, this is your dash back into the, the land of the Neanderthal. I think it's unfair, though, isn't it? I, you know.